Hey everybody, welcome back. In today's video, I want to have a look at the Ethereum Bitcoin pair and also the Bitcoin dominance. Now, I think these two charts are sort of vital together. They offer great insight and the data they provide often complement each other um, and sort of show the same thing. Uh, Ethereum Bitcoin is useful, obviously, to see how Ethereum and Bitcoin are holding up. It shows us where we are roughly in the crypto cycle. It gives us a great insight into how altcoins are holding up because you can sort of look at Ethereum as a much uh, less volatile version of the altcoin market. I mean, uh, altcoins, Bitcoin has sort of managed to separate itself a bit from the altcoin market now where there will be altcoin events that, you know, mightn't affect Bitcoin or mightn't affect it nearly as much as other altcoins whereas Ethereum would still be heavily influenced by these macro factors. And there are events that just seem to boost Bitcoin uh, and not the rest of the altcoin market or not as much as Ethereum might get boosted or moved by this Bitcoin only sort of event. So it's a good way of looking at a calmer version of the altcoin market, let's say, less volatile. Um, and of course, uh, the dominance is dead useful to see sort of where we are in the cycle because we know that Bitcoin's dominance must rise and fall during certain parts of the cycle and where, you know, key levels must be sort of reached or uh, broken or uh, dropped down to. And it also, these two charts, they complement each other because uh, they create a sort of inverse but non-linear uh, sort of uh, relationship where if Ethereum's value is going down to Bitcoin, Bitcoin's dominance is most likely going to rise. I mean, I know there's stable coins now, so more value, more money might be going into stable coins instead of uh, Bitcoin when people are exiting Ethereum and altcoins, but there's still a lot of uh, worry and fear around stable coins, still a lot of regulation in America. I know the SEC is looking at stable coins they want to class them as uh, securities and they've labeled bitcoin as uh, sufficiently decentralized i think was the quote and uh, they're out of the sec's target and their bitcoin is considered safe basically regu from a regulatory standpoint now uh, whether that stays the same who knows but at the moment it's sort of the safest asset in general in the crypto space, obviously in the crypto space, I mean, you know, it's still a pretty unsafe, volatile asset, but I think we're, I think most people in this space now is are pretty optimistic about Bitcoin. I think they've seen that it's, um, you know, been through the worst, it's broken past this 30K uh, mark, and even though I think we will drop down below it, I think a lot of um, uh, relief has uh, been, has um been um you know experienced by the by people that are holding bitcoin looking at bitcoin wanting to buy bitcoin so i think it's just we're less stressed about the markets no one's really worrying about any armageddon event at the moment so whether that happens or not i don't know um again don't have a crystal ball nothing is financial advice but yeah people seem to be trusting bitcoin a lot more and it seems to be the safest place to put your money if you're going to put your money in the crypto space at the moment um and you know like i said inverse relationship with the two ethereum goes down on its bitcoin pair bitcoin dominance most likely going to go up so uh you know for example um you know looking at last month it's been pretty poor um I think in our last video, which would have been about 10 days ago, maybe two weeks, I said that we were expecting to just drop here and we might have a sort of bounce or a, a rally, but I think we will ultimately just end up uh, following this trend. But I wanted to draw your attention to a key sort of level here. I wanted to show you uh, this 0 0.59 sort of level. And I think this is very important. Um, now, this might not be bang on straight. Yeah, it is. Okay. But as we can see, once we blew past this sort of a uh, level here at the beginning, mid-2021, we sort of stayed above it. 
now we wicked below we tested it quite a few times you know obviously here we came back and tested it uh we dropped a good bit here didn't test it we eventually broke down below it here and then rallied back up you can see we obviously tested it twice here before finally breaking up but ever since we've broken up past it we've stayed above it until now where we've suddenly gotten well not suddenly we've slowly gotten very close closer and closer to this line and as we can see we're in pretty much a, a downward movement here i mean i don't think many people are expecting a, a strong rally we might have one we might touch our resistance line before we come down to it but i think very soon as in within within the next three weeks i think we'll be somewhere on this line this uh 0.059 line uh, and i think that's when uh big things will happen in my opinion i think we will probably we might bounce off this line for a bit i think we might spend a bit of time at this line this level but i think ultimately we will go down below it uh, and uh, like most halvings leading up to it bitcoin's dominance goes higher so ethereum will fall on its bitcoin pair but then after the halving we'll see that uh, ethereum will often take back a good bit of its lost um, uh, dominance and value compared to Bitcoin. So, I mean, even in 2020, I'm pretty sure it was May when uh, end of April, wasn't it? Anyway, definitely end of April. Uh, end of April, we had our Bitcoin halving. Ethereum's value compared to Bitcoin drops harshly for two weeks. And during that time, mainly downward, we have a rally up here for some reason over over two week period. Don't know why. Uh, Ethereum collapses again compared to Bitcoin's price. And then pretty soon afterwards, Ethereum picks back up and then claims even more sort of value as we like enter the sort of bull run uh, phase of the market cycle. Now, of course, it did actually um, uh, come back down to these levels a bit over here so you know it's, it's always sort of going through the same range until eventually it just ethereum blew up and brought us to these new highs over here which i think we will we won't deviate too far away from i mean uh this is obviously from you know the bear the bull run here sort of brought us up to these high levels and we haven't left since but i think now this this halving that's coming in next april I think Ethereum will lose value to Bitcoin on its pair leading up to it. I think we're going to break this line. We might come down to here, you know, where these previous wicks were. We might spend a lot of time in this range. And once the halving happens, we might drop a bit below it. But I think Ethereum will then uh, climb back up and bring us into the next bull run along with Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin will perform well, but I think Ethereum will perform uh, slightly better as it has done uh, this time here, you know, during... Uh, May obviously recovered quickly and you know its value compared to Bitcoin went up and even 2016 it was August okay actually maybe the pair didn't exist then but um, yes that's no good looking at but no, what have I done here anyway uh, looking at the dominance as well we can see that it sort of paints a similar picture um, uh, I mean, we know that in the last month alone that uh, Bitcoin Ethereum has been suffering. It's just been red. And we can see here that basically for the, basically the same amount of time, the dominance has gone up 8% relative to where it was a month back. And it's gone up a total of roughly 5%, 4%, exactly bang on 4%, actually almost. Um, so, yeah it's it's a good it's very useful um the two complement each other well if we go back to 2020 and look at the dominance uh, it was may where um bitcoin had its halving or end of april anyway we can see that leading up to it or during it uh dominance rises and then afterwards it falls for a long time because uh, we get all this bitcoin hype bitcoin brings the price up it's very positive price action for Bitcoin. 
you know, uh, you know, the ship that, you know, the tide rises for all boats, you know, brings everybody up, uh, and then it sort of loses its dominance because um, all these altcoins get all this new hype blown back into them, and you know, we see our sort of uh, pre bull run sort of uh, uh, excitement start to build where a few uh, new projects get launched and uh, new updates get announced and roadmaps get you know published and then obviously you can see where we enter the the bull run because or the altcoin season which was you know altcoin summer whatever where dominance literally you know it drops from a peak of 73 percent all the way down to 40 percent over the space of uh you know half a year under third of a year maybe it's you know pretty mental pretty mental and then of course it stays at these ranges and then now is the time where it climbs back up you know like uh, if we're expected to be in a bull run and uh, say 2025 is when it's supposed to kick off if we have a look at two years before 2021 2019 we can see that we had this just steady sort of slow growth bringing us up to these levels which it then fell off during its bull run. And I mean, even if we look here, this is a 2018 uh, sort of time, uh, late 2018 or mid 2018, sorry, uh, July, which is basically where we are now, roughly. We're almost at the same spot. We're literally almost at the same spot. You can see July, whatever, 27th. I mean, it's the 8th today, but you know, you can see by the month we're almost in the exact same position dominance wise you know it's it's climbed might see a little drop here and there it's not really important until it eventually gets to these levels how much longer after a year later basically it'll take us a year to get to these sort of high dominant levels of 70 percent which i think we will revisit again i know a 20 percent jump in dominance sounds huge but really i don't think it's very it's not impossible, definitely, with the way altcoins are bleeding to Bitcoin. I mean, even um, when we were literally just looking at, at Bitcoin, uh, um, when we were just looking here, Bitcoin, Ethereum, y you know, it's been it's been suffering, it's been struggling, at the very least, to hold this sort of 59k line or not get closer to it this last year. Um, and as you can see, we're very close to hitting it. And I think we're due a downward um, spiral here. So that Bitcoin's dominance, like it has many times before, can play out the same way and just rise up to this sort of 60 levelish, 65 levelish, stay here for a while, uh, stay here for the better part of a year even, or take a year to get to here, and then spend five, six, seven, eight months at these sort of high levels. Um, and then slowly give back its dominance to the altcoin market so that the altcoin market can have its uh, big 10, 20, 30x moves. And then the cycle repeats itself. Um, you know, uh, bull run ends, uh, prices fall off a cliff, dominance moves back to Bitcoin, etc., etc. It's the same old story. So I think it is very useful to keep an eye out for you know, this dominance level we've just broken we've well we haven't just broken well yeah we have really we've only just broken past this sort of 50 percent line which is a very important level this is of course i mean literally here a week are we i think i'll uh let's see yeah so we've been above um for 20 days give or take uh which is is decent you know um it's definitely nothing surefire, but I think by the way you can see this is climbing, I, I think we're, we're staying here, and I don't think it's our last move up either. I think we're due a lot of Bitcoin dominance up. And I think as this line grows, lots of smart investors will see this and move their money into Bitcoin, because it's the safest bet. And of course, that's like a cascading effect. As more people move their money into Bitcoin, more people see this, take their own money and put it into Bitcoin. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's literally, 
uh, there's not too much else to say really i'm trying to think if i've forgotten anything but really it's painting the same picture um we had a look at 2020 didn't we yeah uh it's we're just paying for everything but bitcoin for the next almost year really i mean at the halving itself bitcoin doesn't often perform as well as others because it's this sort of short-term worry because suddenly uh, there's less Bitcoin and miners aren't rewarded as much so uh, you know a lot of Bitcoin is sold so dominance does drop for Bitcoin in the short term after the mining uh, and you know that's yeah that's to be expected so short term after the halving there's pain but um, after that it's sort of a slow steady climb from Bitcoin's dominance from Bitcoin uh, and uh, but Ethereum also tends to go up with it. It's all, like I said, it brings everything up with it. Even if we just have a look since uh, 2021 here, we compare the two. Uh, as Ethereum's value went up, Bitcoin's dominance fell. We had this sort of, uh, you know, up, down, up, down, up, down. You can see if we can see anything similar. This is obviously our drop here. The, uh, Bitcoin's dominance obviously rose here as ethereum's price fell to bitcoin and then ever since we've had this strong climb from bitcoin's dominance where ethereum has held much better and we can see that if ethereum has held this well compared to the climb in bitcoin's dominance it's come from the altcoin market this money that's lifting btc's dominance has come from the altcoin market it can't have come from anywhere else uh maybe stable coins but i mean uh, that might as well be new money, to be honest. I mean, it's it's dollars, you know? So it's people that are basically just buying Bitcoin. They're not buying altcoins. Uh, no one, you know, people who are buying altcoins now, they're still going to be in a lot of pain in, you know, half a year's time because this dominance is only going to climb. And if the dominance, dominance climbs, it means altcoins are suffering, including Ethereum, but Ethereum not to the same extent. Again, like I said at the beginning of the video, you can use Ethereum as a tame example of how the general altcoin market will perform. If Ethereum is going down, you can expect the general altcoin market or your favorite altcoin or whatever to see much worse price action in comparison. So, yeah, I thought it would be uh, good for people to see this. Uh, I know people don't like to hear that their favorite altcoin is do some pain but it's, it's 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 just natural it's going to happen um uh you know dominance gonna rise altcoins gonna fall the dominance has to come from somewhere and it's not really coming from ethereum even though i do think we'll have a big drop in ethereum soon i think we'll break below this line spend a bit of time below here like we do before bull runs and then when the bull run starts we'll jump up you know, Ethereum's value along with all the altcoins will pump and, uh, yeah, bring us into this next sort of stage of the bull run. But anyway, again, like I've been saying since day one of this channel, you know, first video, don't put your money into altcoins right now. Uh, not financial advice, but I, I can't see much good happening for them if you're planning on holding for, you know, the short or medium term. I mean, if you want to start DCAing into them now, I think that's probably okay, like, you know, yeah, fair, uh, they're prob most of them are a good price, but also a lot of these altcoins won't come back like you hope they will, like some of them will just be forgotten about. Uh, so, you know, again, it's a risky market to be putting money into, but can be rewarding, of course, you know, that's why people put the money in the first place, it's a gamble, um, especially with those altcoins, but with Bitcoin and Ethereum, at least we have a good bit of data and uh, some previous cycles to compare to that can help us navigate our way through and make um, educated decisions on where we think the price will go short, medium, long term. So, yep, yeah, thanks very much, guys. Really appreciate it. If you like the video, uh, please give me a subscribe, hit it a like, uh, you know, show it to anyone who might be interested. It really helps the channel. Again, really appreciate the support. Um, thanks so much and yeah, see ya.